YouTube. What's going on, guys? Biology professor fired for teaching biology. Shout out to First Liberty. First Liberty. Yeah, I'm doing excellent today. First Liberty live. So the First Liberty Institute is the one who put this video up. They're the, I believe they're the one who made this article, so let's get right into it. Ba -da 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 -da. -ba -ba -ba. Let me give you a little bit of music, right? Part of this project, and thank you for sharing it with your friends and family. You're going to find this topic today, I think, particularly interesting. I've got two people to introduce to you. Keisha Russell is one of our attorneys here at First Liberty Institute. And Johnson Varkey taught anatomy and physiology at a college here in Texas and similar courses for 20 years. Right. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Johnson. Hi, Stuart. G good to see both of you. St. Philip's College is on the east side of San Antonio. The, the name was... We're going to move it forward a little bit here. Uh, the International Bible Church, we're in San Antonio. And to be clear, you keep those two roles separate, right? You of don't course. bring the preaching into the classroom. No, I okay. sure don't. Yeah, I'm sure we can talk about anatomy and physiology in church if you want to, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't bring uh, my preaching into my classroom when I teach about human anatomy and physiology. It's I just teach basic biology. That's but, all I teach. So let me start with this. This guy who teaches anatomy and physiology simply just said that there's X and Y chromosomes between male and female. Just g gave the differences. And that was enough to get him fired? Like, what are you supposed to do to human anatomy? What are we supposed to be like, hey, guys, re really? Are you just going to teach about the organs? What's going to happen when you get to testicles, uteruses, ovaries, and anything that makes a difference between male and female that's medically important? Do you just skip that? Be like, uh, well, normally, guys, there is uteruses, and normally they're in females, and that would help you, you know, if you were in a medical situation. But you might get a trans guy, and he might say he has uterus, and he doesn't. And you go in there to do a procedure to take do something with the uterus that's not there, and the guy ends up passing away. It's just so stupid. And when I say stupid, understand, when I say stupid, there's a difference, okay? when I, The word stupid to me. And from what I've read over the years, it may have changed way much. But stupid is when you have the knowledge and you just you decisively choose to ignore it. So the knowledge is there for you. You know the knowledge and you're like, ah, oh, screw it. I think that's that's what I consider stupid. Not somebody who's ignorant or somebody who doesn't get it. Somebody who knows what they're, what's going on. They know that male and female are different. They know how important it is medically. And they still decide to go, nah, throw it out the window. That's stupid to me. You're choosing and willingly putting other people's lives at risk for this dumb stuff. Because I and I know y'all aren't seeing that now, but we see this with the kids. They're putting them in bad places and trying to get them to have surgery that's life altering that can really change their lives forever, right? But also, like, what are you supposed to do with an EMT if you're a doctor? If you're all this stuff, like, we're not here to fight with you to say, hey, you have this body part, but you. You really don't. Just like a man going to a gynecologist. Like, why Why would I do that? Why would I waste the time? If you're in the middle of surgery, life-saving surgery, real surgery, right? And they end up doing something to you, and they're like, well, you actually had this kind of cancer. You had cancer in your testicles, right? And then a the guy sues you. Can you imagine a guy turning around and suing the doctor because he said that you had cancer in your testicles, and the, the guy's like, I'm a woman, okay? I ain't got testicles. What? You had cancer in your testicle, and now you're upset with me because I said that? That's where I see this going. I just see it being that wild, where you could be trying to save somebody's life. They have breast cancer, and because they identify as a man, they could be like, oh, I don't have breasts. Okay? Don't say I had breasts. You had, I had chest cancer. No, you had breast cancer, you fool. We need to do surgery now, just because you don't believe it. No, I don't want it. I just read Let's talk about one particular day when you're in the middle of your lecture and you, you kind of notice that four students have gotten up and walked out of your classroom. What were you teaching that day that appeared to trigger them, to cause them to exit the room? That day I was teaching the chapter on um, human reproductive system. Ah, that gives us a little bit more insight. I'm really interested. My mic sound good, guys. I'm going to turn it up. Because sometimes I realize I have to put the mic really close to my mouth for me y'all to hear me. 
The reason I do that is because I don't want y'all to hear everything going on around, like me doing this. I try to turn my mic down. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, in when I teach human reproductive system, you know, I emphasize on the fact that male and female, uh, or the maleness or the femaleness, are controlled by two genes. See, in our all our cells, we have 23 pairs of genes, and uh, sorry, chromosomes, chromosomes. Mm -hmm. So the 23rd pair is that determines the sex of a person. So if that 23rd... Simple biology. You see how loud it is now? I feel like y'all can hear my AC downstairs. But I don't know if that's because it's my headphones. My headphones I can hear much better than y'all can. But nonetheless. So it's so funny, man. These guys were just teaching about reproduction and just now going into basic biology. Not trying to be conservative not trying to break any new news that we've been hearing since we were children since our grandparents have been hearing since they were children not breaking ground here and he simply just says hey guys this is this and just because a couple of kids walked out of the school who were paying the school to do that that was enough to fire them based off complaints like you are like what kind of biology teacher pair of chromosomes are x and x it is a female, and if it's X and Y, it's a male. And uh, I mentioned. And I want to say this too. What the original argument used to be was, sex and gender are two different things. And I hated that we ever even conceded that, because this is where it happened. Because now what they used to say is, well, you can be female but be a man too. You can be a man but also be a woman. Because woman is gender and female. They used to say, let's not, both of them are different. But now we are saying both of them are what, one in the same. If somebody says that there's only X chromosomes in a male, and there's a difference, I mean, to, with the double X chromosomes are for females, right? But, but you got an X and Y, and that's a male. Now saying that is controversial. So what are you saying? Are sex and gender the same thing, or are they two different things? Because at this point, the fact that you can walk out just because you said X and Y are part of a male, that's enough for you to be like, no, that's not true. It's whatever you believe it to be. It's like, well, I thought you said that gender and sex were two different things, but now that they are the exact same thing, I'm just... I'm just so lost. I'm just so lost at what is the point of all this at this point? Are they trying to get us to say... Am I echoing, by the way? If anybody can let me know if I'm echoing. But if they're really trying to get us to say male and female are just in our mind, they're crazy if they think that's going to happen. If they think that we're going to get to this, I think that's where they're trying to get us, honestly, to get us to say male and female are not different, not biologically, not physically, not looks, nothing. We are exactly the same. It is whatever you believe to be. If that's where they want us to go, they're out of their mind, out of their mind. In the class, that's what makes male and female not our thinking. Mm. Then second thing I would mention is, you know, to perpetuate human species, to continue our species, not just human species, any species, the sex has to be between male and female, not between two men or two women. To continue the species, that's how the body is designed, so it, the sex has to be between male and female. And the third thing that I would mention is, see, when the sperm, which has 23 chromosomes, and the egg, which has 23 chromosomes, when they join together, we have 46 chromosomes. That's that 23rd, 23 pairs, right. 46 chromosomes. So. That cell, which is the first cell, when we, when may, uh, the sperm and egg joins, that the zygote, which, which has 46 chromosomes, that cell begins to divide. And if we allow that to divide and continue in 38 weeks, we have a beautiful baby. 
And wow, he just said a beautiful baby. Well, never mind. I take back everything I said. Get this guy out of here. Absolute trash. Don't know why he's ever been a professor. Don't know what he went to school for. He just said that you can make a baby between a male and a female. That's sexist. We all know that it doesn't matter. And what are you calling a baby for? At the end of the day, it's just a lump of cells. Like me? <laughs> I didn't even go there. In all seriousness, no, seriousness, though, this man getting fired for just saying simple things. And I think that's what really got him to spark uh, uh, an outrage and four students is when he said reproductions between male and female. I don't know why these people want everything, man. They want to be able to be called what they want, to be able to do what they want, get naked in front of who they want to. And after the end of the day, I'm just going to call it. We can both call it. They don't want any boundaries. They want adults having sex with kids. I don't care what they say. They just want sexual deviancy. That's all they want. They just want a debauchery. They just want men, men having sex with men in the streets, men and women having sex in the streets. They want us, they want men, women having sex with the kids in the streets. I'm just going to call it what it is. I'm sorry. That's just what I see. That's where I see it trying to go. We're not going to let that happen because that's weird. It's wrong. And it's downright evil to bring children into this. But what I what I see when I see all this stuff now, they're just trying to get to this point where sex just rules everything. And y'all know when people used to say sex sells, best believe it was deeper than what they were saying. They weren't just saying it sells like it sells you some lipstick. Sex sells you some clothes. They mean sex sells as in it sells your, you know what I'm going to say. <sighs> only way to stop this guy is to keep standing up keep keep bringing this stuff up i don't care put it on twitter if you want me to um talk about stuff get it to me i'm always looking around man i don't care man this in this life you're gonna have to choose to stand for something and i'm not saying everybody ha has to go die on this hill okay but when you're living your life you've got to stand up for something even in your own community if you're just standing up for better tax rates if you're standing up in your city for uh, better schooling better public schooling you're standing up for your kids to lower the crime rates i don't care what you choose but you cannot just stand by idly for the rest of your life and just like, let life pass you by those are the most dangerous people i've said it once again the most dangerous people are the people who don't care because when you get a bunch of people who in mass don't care they'll just follow whatever that's when they start to control that's when the control starts to happen to all of us. We all start to fall into this hole of, well, we'll just let the, we'll just let the people who are in power tell us what to do. I don't want to get canceled. I don't want to. And you know what? I want to end on this note. For you guys who are afraid of getting canceled, you guys who are afraid of um, getting mocked and stuff like that, here's just a little bit of a harsh truth that I have realized and you got to realize. For the vast majority of most of us people are nobodies. As far as fame goes, like for me to get canceled, it would mean nothing because my life does not, I'm not famous. It's not like my life depends on the people paying me money. It doesn't, right? For you, most people don't care what you say. Most people don't care what you think, right? So why spend your whole life caring of, I'm going to get canceled all this. Stand on what you believe on and believe in, Okay. And yes, some people are going to care, but for the most part, you can live your life and be who you want to be and stand on these actual morals of yours. Because the truth, because you think people canceling you, like it's not as big as you think it is. If you're working at McDonald's, if you're just working at your local Walmart, heck, if you're just a nurse, right? And you're working in your hospital, helping people, saving lives. You're more than likely not going to get fired and more likely get canceled because most hospitals don't care that much. It's only when you're big in the spotlight that that's going to matter. I'm not trying to belittle anybody to say you're nobody's, but what I'm trying to say is you guys live in constant fear of being canceled and judged. It's just like when somebody gets on Twitter, including myself, and you say something controversial and you get no replies, no retweets. Nobody even comments on the tweet. You think you said something so controversial and nobody even saw it. Six people saw it out of the millions of people that see other stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
So why be scared? Don't live in constant fear. Be who you want to be and stand on these morals and protect the people you need to protect. Don't let these people push you into fear and make you seem like if you just utter, hey, I think men are men and women are women, that they're going to come for you. And let me say this again. I'm also not saying that could it happen? Yes, there's always a possibility. There's always a possibility that something could happen. Somebody, you could get fired from your job because somebody in the upper place don't like you. Or they think, oh, no, there's no way you can say that. But even if that is the case, let's say that is the case, you could get fired from your job. Who, what does it matter? I know you have a family to take care of. I'm not saying being controversial for the sake of being controversial. But if you truly believe something, don't go against your morals like that because it will destroy you. It will not make life worth it. Because if you think every day you wake up and you see stuff just going on, and you just stand idly by and watch it happen because you, you all you care about is your job. I promise you guys, and this is just a harsh reality. You could lose your job as a nurse. I'm just picking that one because it's the one I could see a lot more people relating to. You could lose your job as a nurse and never become a nurse again. You may have to go pick another profession. That's okay. That's okay. You can move on in life. Will it hurt your family? Listen, I have a buddy of mine who had a great job making more money than you could think of. He stood on his principles. He stood on his principles and decided that he had to make a career change. And he is making far less money than he has ever made since the day he got out of college. And that's been 10 years now. 10 years, been out of college, living life. He sacrificed his money that he was using for his family to stand on something he truly believed in. And though he is struggling at the moment, why struggle? If he could, he, I would, he, would, he would rather struggle financially than struggle mentally and spiritually the rest of his life. Because there's one thing, guys. What is the worst thing in life? It's not dying. Because once you die, it's over. Wanting to die every day is one of the worst feelings. Not being able to live with yourself is one of the worst feelings in the world. You know what I'm talking about. This man has to live with, he decided to stay with, even though he is a religious man, he decided to stick with his principles because there's no way he can live with himself. Y'all all know what it feels like to not be able to look yourself in the mirror and not be able to live with yourself. You can have your nice little job for 40 years, but every day you wake up you will almost be miserable almost every single day and that is the worst life to live wanting not to live at all not wanting to wake up every single day every time you open your eyes it's like you just I can't believe I've been there oh man I've been there one of the worst feelings in the world man I don't wish that upon anybody let me know what y'all think of the cup section down below. Peace.